welcome back for another video. We're finally back on Ark Survival Ascended, giving me the perfect opportunity to dive straight into underrated creatures. So here's 20 underrated creatures and why you should tame them in Ark Survival Ascended. Let's get straight into it. Kicking off our list is going to be the Iguanodon. Not the best battle mount by any means. However, it shines through with its traveling capabilities. Being able to switch its stance position between quadrupedal and bipedal. The quadrupedal mode does not consume any stamina when running. Adding to this, it can jump when in the bipedal stance. It is also equipped with a unique ability. When accessing the radial menu, it has the option to convert any type of berries or crops in its inventory into seeds. So if you're looking to get from A to B extremely quickly, then the Iguanodon is the one to take you there. The Megalodon, in my opinion, is the most underrated aquatic predator. Players will tend to pick the Tusa Toothis, the Mosasaurus, or the Basilosaurus over the Megalodon as a battle mount. But what makes the Megalodon so powerful is its strength in numbers. They have one of the strongest pack ratings in the entire game, capping out at 8 members per pack. They will receive 8.5% extra melee damage and damage resistance per extra pack member. Adding to their ridiculously strong pack bonuses, they have access to Nashed which is a bleeding effect that drains up to 5% of the victim's health over 5 seconds, making them a formidable fighting force and able to take down prey 10 times their size. I usually take a high level pack of Megalodons with good saddles in the hard underwater cave. This cave is very well known to spawn large quantities of high level aquatic creatures. However, a pack of Megalodons will steamroll their way through this cave with ease. They can also be equipped with a tech saddle, which is the icing on the cake. The Terror Bird is next up on the list. The Terror Bird is very comparable to the Raptor in terms of stats. They also do not receive pack buffs like the Raptor, and they are admittedly harder to tame. So here you ask, why would you pick the Terror Bird? Well, the Terror Bird can be very quick, has a good turning radius, and has slightly higher damage than a lone Raptor. Adding to this, it can also glide great distances with its flappy wings. This can be done from any height and can reduce or negate full damage. This makes them a great traveling mount and also a great cave explorer, being the closest thing to a mountable flyer in caves. The Diplocolus can be used as a portable scuba tank at the cost of the creature's own oxygen stat. It cannot be ridden on land, but can be ridden once underwater. They are a very frail creature, but are very quick swimmers, and can outrun most aquatic predators. The Diplocaus is also exceptionally good at hunting trilobites. They will deal 10 times their melee damage to them, making them a great way of harvesting small amounts of oil, silica pearls, and black pearls. Canine versus Feline is a common argument within the arc, and typically the Sabertooth will lose out to its competitor, the Direwolf, as survivors tend to pick the Direwolf due to its pack buffs, higher health, and higher damage. However, unlike the Direwolf, the Sabertooth can be saddled, giving them armor protection. They are quick and strong battle mounts for their size, boasting stronger stats than the Raptor and slightly less than the Direwolf. They have very good base speed and stamina, with the ability to jump, adding to this take less full damage than most creatures. They make for exceptionally good hunters, being one of the best carcass harvesters on the island for hide, pelt, chitin and keratin. This also makes them a great cave mount for many of the caves on the island. The Conotaurus never gets the love it deserves, with the T-Rex being far superior in power and the Allosaurus having pack bonuses, the Conotaurus is left forgotten. So why would you want to tame one? First of all, the saddle can be unlocked much earlier than the Allosaurus and the T-Rex. They have a decent base damage, good speed, stamina and and maneuverability. They are also equipped with a headbutt attack. This attack will inflict the bleed effect Nashed, draining 5% of the target's health over 10 seconds. And despite being outclassed by the Baryonics, they are far more common on the island. The Kano is also a great cave mount, being able to fit through most of the cave entrances on the island. The Sarko is a very underrated creature. They are a rather versatile mount, however, survivors will tend to pick the Baryonics over the Sarko due to their wide versatility. But the Sarko is not one to be underestimated. Estimated. So why would you pick the Sarko over the Baryonics? First of all, they are far more common on the island, making it far easier to find a high level to tame. Supply beacons and crates also commonly drop Sarko saddles, whereas a good quality Baryonic saddle is very rare to find. The Sarko is equipped with three different attacks. The standard bite attack, its death roll that can grab small to medium creatures and humans, and its pounce, which can only be used on a valid target in the middle of the camera. Although they are rather slow on land when compared to the Baryonics, they are however fast to 
swimmers. Everyone hates piranhas in this game, and when riding the Sarko, they will begin to flee at the sight of you. They do not possess an oxygen stat and can instantly regenerate their stamina when underwater. You can wield your weapons while riding, making it the perfect man to open the door for ocean exploration, and will have no problems outswimming most threats in the ocean. Overall, the Sarko has decent stats across the board, making it a useful creature to get around the map, whatever the terrain. The Spinosaurus. Yes, the Spinosaurus is underrated, and maybe the most common debate within the Ark world is what is better, the Spino or the T-Rex? And the reason why the Spino loses this debate is because the T-Rex has a far higher health stat and slightly higher damage, but the Spino has some unique perks to compete with its rival. The Spino can change its stance position from quadrupedal, which increases their movement speed and now attack speed, and bipedal, which when in this stance they will deal more damage per hit, and will give them excellent maneuverability being able to pivot 360 degrees on the spot. Added to this, whenever the Spino touches or submerges themselves in water, they will receive the hydrated buff, which will last for 30 seconds after leaving the water. It will increase their melee damage, movement speed, health regeneration and turning radius speed all by 20%, making them much stronger battle mounts. They are extremely quick runners when in quadrupedal mode, can regenerate stamina in the water just like the Sarko, and are very capable swimmers, making them viable for ocean exploration. They can also be considered for boss fights However, this is the main reason why the Rex is more commonly picked. The Rex is a far more efficient boss fighter. You would need a very strong breeding line if considering the Spino over the Rex for boss fights. The Leoplurodon is an extremely rare creature to find in the ocean, and they could be a very controversial pick as to whether they're worth taming or not, as they are only a temporary tame that lasts for 30 minutes. Once tamed, the Leoplurodon gives the Mystic Skin Oil buff, which will last for 6 hours. This will increase the rarity and value of any loot box you open. Basically, when you're in range, the contents of the drop will change, giving you a slightly higher chance of finding better loot. Any affected loot crates will briefly sparkle when you approach them to signify that the contents have been changed, and this is where the speculation comes in. Let's just say the loot crate that was re-rolled already contained high quality rare items. The Mystic Skin Oil buff would re-roll that crate, potentially giving you worse loot. Therefore, the Leopluridon is not worth taming if playing as a solo. The best way to utilize this is with tribe mates. Have your tribe mate approach the loot crate first while you hang back. This then gives them the option to take out anything that is useful, leaving the least desired item inside. You can then begin approaching the loot crate, which with the Mystic Skin Oil buff will re-roll that crate. This gives you double the chance of finding rarer qualities and more quantities of loot. Be sure not to die during this time frame, otherwise you will lose the effect. The male Megaloceros is an extremely underrated creature. They can quickly gather thatch when attacking through trees. This makes them great for running through swamp trees, as they will also harvest a decent amount of rare mushrooms. Their antler attack deals 30 damage, which is pretty average. However, when attacking humans, this attack will apply a bleed effect to the target, which will last for 30 seconds, reducing 20 percent of the total player's health and will also negate any healing effect from consumable items. The Kentrosaurus is not one to be underestimated. Although they cannot be ridden, they can make for excellent base defenders. First of all, they are pack dinosaurs, which will go up to plus four in a pack of five or more Kentros. They receive 6.5 percent extra melee damage and damage resistance per pack member. And just like the Alpha Pleura, they will deal reflective damage to anything that attacks them with melee attacks. This defense mechanism can fully enrage a Giga just from taking a few bites. They are equipped with a tail swing attack. Adding to this attack, they can also pick up and impale small to medium creatures and players, which will trap them on their spikes, causing a constant bleeding effect. And who said you can't use the Kentro for a boss fight? In this clip, I had one UT and 19 Kentros. All Kentro levels were pumped into health, all had sweet veggie cakes in their inventory, and they took care of the Gamma Megapithecus. With no losses, and you have to remember they do not have saddle armor. This really goes to show how strong they can be. They are absolutely absolute beasts. The Compi is seen as one of those extremely annoying dinos that you encounter in the wild, especially when starting out your arc journey. And due to wild babies spawning everywhere across the map in ASA, this makes them extremely easy to tame at the early game, as all you need is a few prime meat to tame one. They are now potentially the easiest shoulder pet to tame. Of course, anything you put inside their inventory will have 50% weight reduction when on your shoulder. They will help you carry many more items, which can be invaluable when starting out your arc journey. They do also have pack buffs. And 
and can have up to plus eight in a pack of nine or more compies. I honestly can't tell you how useful this could be. I've personally never witnessed a tamed army of compies, as much as I'd love to see one. The Hyena Don is a very underused creature in my opinion, but they do have some unique abilities at their disposal. Once equipped with the Hyena Don meat pack, this doubles the spoilage time of any kind of meat in the game. Once inside the Hyena Don's inventory, this makes them great for preserving meat that spoils quickly like raw mutton or raw prime meat. When you pet them, they receive a buff of 120 seconds. This will give them 50% damage reduction and will double the damage they deal. Another cool thing about the hyena is whenever they bite and consume a corpse, they will instantly replenish massive amounts of their health. They are also pack animals, having up to plus 6 in a group of 7 or more hyenas, receiving more damage output and resistance for each pack member. This makes them great for taking down prey larger than themselves. The Dimetrodon can be used as a portable air conditioner. They will provide 90 hypothermic and hyperthermic insulation, and this insulation will scale with the melee damage, so be sure to tame higher levels if you're looking to incubate fertilized eggs. The higher the melee damage, the better they are as portable air conditioners. The Calicotherium can be an annoying creature to tame, which is probably why a lot of people shy away from taming one, but once tamed they can be an extremely useful asset. Their melee attack is rather mediocre, however they are equipped with a rock throw attack, which will deal exceptionally more damage, and can be scaled by leveling the Calico's melee damage stat. In turn, they can be used as portable catapult turrets. They do have less range than a catapult turret, however you do have unlimited ammunition. The Calico Theorem is also equipped with a sit option. Doing this will reduce its food consumption by 50% and recover its health by 2% per second up to 50%. They are also equipped with a turret mode, making them a valuable tame to defend your base. Diabear is an extremely useful mount if looking to travel long distances. With decent health, high stamina, weight and damage, makes the Diabear perfect for a wide variety of uses. They will gain more speed the longer they run, and at full sprint, are one of the fastest land creatures in the game. They are extremely strong battle mounts for their size, having a bite attack that can be used when at full sprint, and also has an alternate claw attack, which will deal more damage similar to that of a Rex. This attack can also be used on wild beehives, to harvest the hive for 15 giant beehives honey which is three times the amount that a human would harvest it for. They can do this without damaging the hive and without aggro from the bees inside, making it an extremely useful way to gather honey. The diabet is an omnivore, making them a decent meat gatherer. Due to their super fast speed, they will harvest berries and fiber ridiculously quickly and in large amounts. The Megalania is far from the strongest battle mount by any means, but what it does do with its bite attack is inflict Mega Rabies to human players. They are also exceptionally good climbers, and can climb almost any vertical surface, and can even climb upside down on ceilings, at the cost of their own stamina stat. Adding to this, you can use your weapons while riding, which can make them a great taming aid, or could be great in PvP to set an ambush. Whenever you dismount the Megalania, they will stay latched onto the surface, and this will not drain their stamina when unridden. The Megalania also also receives zero full damage from any height. Once Aberration releases, the Megalania will be extremely useful. They are pretty rare to find on the island, so if hunting them for their tributes, you might be better off taming a male and female, as whenever you breed them, every baby will contain two Megalania toxin in their inventory. The beaver may not seem like an underrated creature, however most survivors will pick the Mammoth as a wood collector and pick the Argentavis as a portable smithy, which admittedly I am both guilty of, but there are many perks to have in the beaver. Unfortunately, you have to be level 61 to saddle a beaver, which doesn't really help its situation. However, you can still tame them and make use of their wood gathering capabilities. When on wander or near a wooded area, they will gather wood by themselves until reaching 50% of their weight capacity. Of course, this is very risky, but left in a relatively non hostile area and with a couple of bodyguards, they should be fine. Of course, they can be used as a portable smithy, having 50% weight reduction for wood, thatch, fiber, and stone. But what makes the beaver a great wood gatherer is that they are very small which if playing on a PvP server may be a more viable option to gather wood. Just to stay under the radar, shall we say, they can also be picked up by an Argentavis, so you can take them to a densely wooded area and come out rich with wood. They are also exceptionally good swimmers, making them a great way to get around if you live next to rivers or the ocean. Up next we have the Tapahara, an extremely mobile flyer capable of strafing left and right and move directly up and down from the stationary position. This can be very helpful for building tall bases or outmaneuvering other flyers 
flyers when in aerial combat. They have better health, stamina and weight stats than the Pteranodon and have a pretty decent flying speed which is slightly faster than the Argentavis and slightly slower than the Pteranodon. Along with a rider seat they are equipped with two passenger seats. Any players sat in the passenger seats are free to wield their weapons and what you can also do if playing as a solo is board the front passenger seat. You can guide your Tapahara with the whistle move command and being as you are in the passenger seat you can also use your weapons while flying. Both of these features make them great for solo taming and taming with tribe mates. They are the only flyer that has access to a tech saddle. They can also latch onto vertical surfaces which will regain any lost stamina. The rider can also wield their weapons when latched but to be honest it's very difficult to see anything from this position or maybe I just suck at flying. And finally I've chosen the Equus. Far from an underused creature however I do believe their abilities are widely underrated. They can be ridden with no saddle and can be saddled at level 20 which when saddled turns them into a portable mortar and pestle with weight reduction for a wide variety of resources making them exceptionally good for the early game. They are equipped with a kick attack. This attack will deal torpor damage for three times its melee damage making them exceptionally good for knocking creatures out or human players for that matter. It can be slightly riskier knocking creatures out this way as the Equus also deals quite a lot of health damage to the target as in some cases they can end up killing the creatures you're trying to tame but you will save on your tracks. What you can also do once you saddle the Equus is craft lassoes in its inventory. Whack them on your hotbar for quick access giving you the ability to drag conscious and unconscious humans and a wide variety of creatures. This can include flyers the size of a Quetzal or Rhinia Naffa. And that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. These videos do take a long time to make so if you did enjoy it please consider liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing for all that extra our content. Hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year. I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.